my name is Charlotte. I'm a digital media consultant at the NCSU Libraries. Um, I'm going to be doing some pottery today. Um, first, I don't have any clay that's ready right now, so I'm going to be wedging, which I will do for you um, on the stream. And then after I wedge, I'm going to throw something on the wheel. I think I'm going to do some mugs, but I'm not entirely sure yet. We'll see what happens. Make sure you guys get a good view of what's going on. Yeah, that's okay. I gotta take my rings off first. I always forget to do this. Hi, Claire. How you doing? As you can see, like, lots of air bubbles. It's really not um, ready to be used yet. Um, so it's a pretty simple process for getting it ready. I just have to find my wire cutter. Um, so I'm just going to cut this in half. Uh, and then I'm going to wedge it. Uh, and I typically do, oh, thanks Claire, I'm excited for you to watch some throwing. Um, I typically do a ram's head wedging technique, um, it's just what I was taught. There are different ways to do it, um, but essentially it's just pushing the clay over on itself, all in one direction, um, to remove any air bubbles. That was my dad walking by. Um, but you can see, this is why they call it ram's head wedging, because it looks like a ram's head. This is, um, tedious process. You gotta do it a lot of times because if there's air bubbles in it, um, it kind of messes up when you throw, like it just doesn't, it'll throw the entire piece off, so you want to be really thorough with this step. This should be good for now. Um, I'm gonna kind of roll it into like a more, I don't know, like homogenous shape so that it can be turned into a ball later. All right. 
No, that's pretty much ready to go. Hopefully there's no air bubbles in there. Um, we'll see when it's on the wheel. I'm gonna go ahead and throw um, and wipe this other one too, just so it's all prepped. Normally, like, this will be secured to the table in some way, shape, or form, but I don't have that kind of setup right now, so it's much easier if the canvas isn't, like, moving all around, but working with what I got. This is probably one of the more boring parts of pottery, um, but it's nice to take a repetitive action. Oh, thank you, Isaac, for setting it to pottery wheel throwing. I don't actually know how to do that, so I should probably learn. Um, but yeah, this is like the second step to reusing clay. The first step is to like take all your scraps and to put it in a bucket with some extra water like this. <laughs> um, and then you can kind of just scrape it out onto a plaster bat and then that kind of sucks all the moisture out um, and gets it to like a firm enough state for you to be able to start doing this which is wedging so two step process So this is what we're working with. I think I'll probably make four cups if all goes according to plan. There might be air bubbles, not sure. And just to show you guys from last time, this is the, I mean, it was supposed to be a sake pour, but it didn't turn out to be one. Um, it's kind of more like a vase, but I think I like it more, so I'm really happy with it, uh, especially since hand building is not my forte. Okay, so I'm going to turn you around. The lighting should be better now that the sun is coming in rather than glaring at us. Okay, 
So, let's see if it's gonna move y'all a little bit closer. The flare at the top. Thank you. Yeah, I I added that. Um, I added that in last minute, but I was like, I think this needs something a little bit extra. Um, let me put my phone over here so that. But, so now, the first step starts with the bat. Um, essentially, you don't have to throw on a bat. It just makes it easier so that when you're done with your um, piece, you can just lift it up off the wheel head. Um, everything's a little bit dirty down here. Sometimes the bats are a little bit like warped um, if they dry in a certain way. But you don't want to throw a bat that's warped because it'll just fly right off the wheel. Um, and there's like a couple little pins right here um, to keep the bat in place. So now I'm going to turn my wheel on. Oh, it was already on. Okay, so kind of wet the wheel head a little bit, get rid of some of this dirt. That's not usually stuff you have to do. Most potters keep their studio cleaner than I do. But. All right. Fingers crossed, everyone, that I wedged these well and there's no air bubbles. Looks good. You can check for air bubbles. Just like that. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is, it's already kind of circular since I just wedged it, but I'm just going to put it into more of a ball shape. And you do that by just cupping your hand. Um, around the ball of clay to kind of force it into that spherical shape. Um, and Claire asks, what happens if there are air bubbles? So essentially when there are air bubbles, it makes your pot... There's a lot of problems with air bubbles. <laughs> so I'd say one of the number one things is if you throw up, um, if you fire a pot with an air bubble and you put it through the kiln, there's a chance that like it will explode and or crack and or break, um, which you just don't want. It's a mess. Um, and it's also really sad when a pot that you like breaks like that. Um, but also, like, it makes the throwing process pretty difficult. Like, um, when you, you when you center your clay, you want all of the clay to be perfectly centered on the bat. Um, and air bubbles make that kind of impossible to happen. So, like, when you're pulling up the wall of the pot, as I'll show you. If there's like an air bubble, it's going to throw your pot off and it won't be symmetrical. Okay. So now it's more of a circular shape, kind of. Um, and the next step is to just kind of throw it really hard, as close as you can get it to the center. Um, Sometimes I kind of guide it as if I didn't really do a good job. Um, so now it's attached to the wheel head. Something that I do kind of as precautionary, because this isn't, it's not really guaranteed that it's attached right now, um, is I kind of run my finger along the base. And as you can see, this is really not centered. Um, so that's why we're going to center it right now. Um, so you get your hands wet. Now it's more attached to the to the bat. Um, I kind of just, it's kind of hard to explain what you do. I'm taking this hand and I'm bracing it against the clay and I'm not letting it move um, because if I let it move, then the clay wouldn't be pushed into a perfect sphere, ball, um, mound, whatever it is. But um, yeah, so most important is to like 
brace this arm against yourself. And what you see with like a lot of new potters is like this, like their hand moving. Um, and you want to avoid that just because it's really hard to center it that way. And um, if you can't center the pot, you won't make a symmetrical piece. Um, so what's next is a process called coning. There might be another word for that. Coning and something. I don't know. But you bring it up into a cone shape, and then you bring it back down. And that kind of helps um, the centering process essentially. I want to make sure you guys can see. So I feel like there might be an air bubble in here. I can kind of feel it with my fingers. Sometimes you can kind of pop them. So we'll see how that goes. Okay, I would say that's centered enough. Well, maybe it's not. Oh, thanks, Isaac. I we just forgot the other word, but that sounds right. <laughs> okay, so now um, I'm going to take my pointer finger. Sometimes I use my middle finger to kind of just make an indentation in the clay um, and bring it down. I'm not going to push my finger down all the way to the back because then my pot wouldn't have a bottom. So I like to leave like half an inch there because when you trim it too, you're going to want to have a little bit of, you know, room to be able to cut off the excess clay on the bottom. Um, so yeah. Pull it out a little bit. Oop, I felt an air bubble, but it popped, so hopefully we're clear. What I'm doing right now is I'm just compressing the bottom. If you don't compress the bottom, you might get S cracks, which is like if you fire it sometimes, there'll be a crack in the bottom in the shape of an S, but usually if you compress the bottom, it doesn't happen. So now I'm going to start the process of bringing up the walls. Let me try to bring you guys closer because so you can see.
That's a little bit better. So, bringing up the walls now. Yeah, that's nice. I'm happy with that. I was worried about this pot for a second. Um, and after I pull the walls up, I can press it back down with my finger like this. Like I kind of make a little, I don't know what I did, but do it like that. And then it keeps the, t the rim nice and compressed so that it doesn't get too thin. The shape is kind of coming together. I'll attach handles probably tomorrow, and I'll definitely do a stream someday where I show myself attaching handles. I don't think I'm going to keep this pot particularly because I can feel it has air bubbles in the side in a couple places. Maybe I will just to see what happens, but I don't know. Sometimes it's just not worth it. <laughs> If you know it's going to crack later, so I get attached to it. Um, so now I can kind of change the shape if I want to. Like, if I were to compress here, it would make the top thinner. Um, and if I wanted to, like, make it wider at the base, I would just kind of apply pressure to the bottom part. Uh, and the moderator says, this process seems so quick compared to the hand building the other week, and yes, it absolutely is. Um, that might just be because I'm not, like, very skilled in hand building. It takes me a really long time. Um, but just, like, regardless, it is a lot faster to throw on the wheel. I think this will make a nice mug. I'm pretty happy with this shape. Um, you can use different tools to kind of change the shape though and clean it up, like, um, I can use this wooden rib to take away clay at the bottom, which will just save me from having to do it later, um, during the trimming process. Now this is kind of um, making the wall super straight because it's a straight surface that I'm applying to the side with pressure, um, which I might want, but I don't know. I can't decide if I want to have it, what I want. I think I'm gonna leave it like this. I like that. It's cute. So I'm just cleaning up the room, making sure it's pretty. And sponging out any excess water from throwing so that it dries more evenly. And there you have it. I'll probably clean this up a little bit, so maybe time later as well. Okay. Oh, I forgot a step, but I'll show it to you before I cut it. Well.
there you have it. It's a little mug. I think if you, I don't know if you can see. Should, yeah, that little bump in there is an air bubble. So that, oh, and there's two. I probably won't keep it just because I know it will explode, even though it looks pretty. Even though I know it's just going to explode in the kiln probs or crack. And then if it doesn't, then it it has more of a chance of breaking when it's in use than another thing. Um, but if I were going to keep it until the end, you cut it off the wheelhead so that it's easier like um, to take off the bat once it's leather hard. Um, and I'm actually going to cut this in half right now. Um, a lot of potters, you'll see a lot of potters doing that. Um, it's so that you can gauge um, the thickness of your wall because you want your walls to be thin, but you also want them to be, um, you also want them to be even. Um, so we'll see how I did. We'll see how I did. That's not too shabby. Okay. Yeah, I was trying to think of the best way to show you. Yeah, okay, that's better. So, as you can see, the walls are pretty even right here, but it gets a little bit thicker towards the base. I'm still working on that. I'm getting all of the clay I can away from the base as, it, as I can, but it's kind of difficult, um, especially because you don't want to make the base too weak because it could collapse. Um, but also, in the end, you can, like, you do want to leave a little bit of extra right here because, um, you're going to trim it off later. So, like, trimming and all, this would have been a good pot, minus the air bubbles, which you can see there's one. Yeah, like, pop it. Um, so, yeah. So, this is the part of throwing that I feel like not a lot of people show. It's like... There's so many things that could go wrong all the time, and so when that happens, you just kind of put it in your slot bucket, which is right next to my wheel. And then I'll reclaim it. Um, but I'm going to try again. Hopefully I make one without air bubbles. Um, I think I'm going to wedge it. Um, yeah, I'm going to wedge it just... Since there was air bubbles in the other one, I think it means it needs a little bit more wedging. I was trying to be fast. Um, but yeah, I think I'm going to hop on the Be Right Back screen. And after I'm done wedging, I'll be back in like three or four minutes tops.
Okay, I'm back. Um, I rewedged. Uh, hopefully, no air bubbles this time. Fingers crossed. Um, I'll start with this one actually. But I'm gonna cut it in half. So since I didn't end up keeping the last pot, if I did keep it, I would just put it over on my table and then grab a new one. But since this one's still okay, just kind of take the excess clay off and then it goes straight into my slot bucket, which I will show you. I don't want to like <laughs> drop my computer. <laughs> there it is. This is just a bunch of old clay um, from when I mess up and stuff like that. Let me try to, I'm covered in dirt right now, but I'm going to try and clean my little webcam. Ooh, that's kind of better. Okay, good news. All right. Yes. We'll throw this. No air bubbles. Okay, Isaac, the moderator says, I like that if you make mistakes or maybe if you just want to practice making something, you can reclaim the clay and make it again, or and use it again. Yeah, um, pottery is full of mistakes. Like, I just, I can't tell you how many mistakes that I've made. Like, infinite, infinite number of mistakes. It's like, on my Instagram, I just post, you know, the pots that came out really well or, like, you know, stuff like that. You don't see, like, you know, the four pots that were <laughs> messed up in order to make the one really pretty one. But yeah, just coning up again and then bringing it down to center. I can already tell that this clay is more um, I don't know. The reason that you wedge is so that all the clay particles are going in the same direction, and you can kind of feel it, like, when you're trying to center whether or not <laughs> all the clay particles were going in the same direction. One thing you want to be careful of is you don't want to use too much water. Otherwise, the clay won't have any, like, strength to pull itself up because it'll be too wet. I slow my wheel down for this part. You don't want to go too fast.
Yeah, so I'll show you the pedal. Um, Isaac is wondering whether or not, or how you control the speed and if you can do that at all times. Um, this is how. Some plotters keep it up here so they can do it with their hands. I'm going to start to bring up the walls again. This one, I don't feel any air bubbles, so... Great news. Um, you can kind of see there's a lot of clay at the bottom. What I'm doing is bringing as much of it as I can up so that the pot is lighter and has even walls. It feels so different when, like, you know there's no air bubbles or anything and you're going to be able to keep it. It's such a good feeling. Um, and also, just, like, it feels better to throw because it's all the wall very smooth if you fold them up. So what's happening now is I can feel it's pretty thick here. It's thinner here. And it's thicker again up here, but less thick up here than it is down there. So my goal is to try and even it out. Um, so I'm going to be changing the amount of pressure that I'm applying as I pull up. So I'll apply the most pressure at the bottom to bring the clay from the bottom upwards. Less pressure here because you don't want to make these, these like the middle part, too thin. Um, otherwise, it will collapse. Um, and then kind of like doing, going back to medium pressure at the top so that it's all even. Hmm, I'm debating whether I want to keep this shape or not, because this is like a pretty standard mug, but... This stuff, this super liquidy stuff, is called slip. Um, you make it just by watering down clay. It's super smooth. This is what you use to um, combine different pieces. So it's like the glue. 
if I were to let this get leather hard and make a handle and attach the handle, I would have to score and slip. And so scoring is just kind of creating like patch marks in the clay. Um, and then you apply the slip and then you have the other piece with the hatch marks as well and then you connect them and it, it's like a glue and you have to score and slip or else it, it, it just won't stay. It seems like it will. It won't. Um, it's a very important part of the process. So I have a jar of slip that I just keep over there. It's like a paintbrush in I think this is good. I'm gonna keep it like this. All right, and there you have it. This is gonna be a mug, and I'll show you what it'll look like once it's trimmed. It has a handle. So it's essentially the same thing. Um, this has shrunken a little bit because clay shrinks as it dries. Um, but yeah, this is once you attach the handle, you got yourself a functional mug. Um, and then this little foot ring is what you get from the trimming process. So one of these days I'll show that and it'll be all good. But yeah, I've been really into making mugs this shape recently. Um, I think they look like really cool and contemporary. Um, and so I think I'm going to continue to make mugs that look like this. But anyway. Then I just remove it from, oh, I forgot to cut it, actually. Oh, Isaac said that's a good looking mug. Thank you, Isaac. I appreciate it. I'm not going to cut this one in half. <laughs> and um, this is my, just unplug you for a second. This is my drying table over here. Over That's my, um, my dad is growing little seedlings for his garden. Um, but this is just where I put all my pots that are you know, in progress, um, whether they be like dry and painted with underglaze or whether they just be freshly thrown, that's where they go. I got that table at a nice little yard sale. Look at it. Cool. This is the bat that doesn't want to stick on. I don't know why that happens. I think it's just because it like maybe took too long to dry and it warped a little bit. But sometimes like they do that and then sometimes they're fine. But like the same one that was giving me problems. Doesn't make any sense. Um, so I could make another mug, if you like. Um, 
Uh, Isaac says, cool to see a little more of the studio and see the process in different stages. Yeah, I can do a full studio tour at the end if you want. Uh, there's not actually much more to it than that. Um, I just have, like, tools everywhere. This is actually, like, the garage behind my house, um, and I share it with my dad, who has all his gardening stuff in here. Um, so it's, like, a nice mix of power tools and clay stuff. That was, that was the best one so far. Sometimes you like try to throw it in the middle and it's just like way over there. And if you don't like attach it right, sometimes the whole thing will just like come off into your hands as you're trying to center it. My, um, my seat is wobbly, so I'm constantly, like, trying to balance it in the right way. I'm trying to show you guys a little bit more what it looks like. It's hard. It's hard for this process. Like my foot, my hand is covering it, but there's no way for it to not. At the craft center, they have these fancy um, overhead cameras so that you can get like the aerial view of throwing, and that's really helpful when you're in a class to see it a bit better.
I don't normally make like stuff that's all the same shape, but I feel like it's that's what people prefer. Like when I'm selling it, um, I feel like people want you know sets, but I never make sets. I always make one off like pieces. So I've been trying to get into the habit of making at least two of the same piece sometimes because um, it's good practice like to be able to throw something on the wheel and then recreate it because um, it's not very easy to do that um, I've always struggled with that because I mean just getting the sizing right So this one kind of has like, I don't really think you can see it, but it has like a natural, um, it's got kind of a natural, I don't know, it's sticking out of it. So I'm going to use this to put it back in. There you have it. It's another one. Another mug. If you want to see them um, side by side, they're pretty similar. They're not exactly the same, but. I'm pretty happy with that. <sighs> okay, it's time for the last one. I don't think I'm 
going to make another mug. I think I'm going to... I think I'm gonna try to make something else for you guys. Do you guys have any requests for what you want me to make? whether or not to use this or not. Are bowls difficult? No, bowls are not difficult. Um, it's very similar to what I was making. Instead of pulling up, you pull out. Um, so I can make a bowl if you want. Okay, I'm making a bowl this time around.
Okay, so I'm gonna start by pulling it up um, and then pulling it out. Because if you start by pulling it out, um, your the walls of the bowl will be like too close to the ground. I guess gravity brings it down. If that makes any sense, I feel like a lot of the mistakes that can be made, like you have to learn through it happening to you to understand like what's going on. Like I don't know. I always have found pottery hard to explain. Um, like the different things that the clay does, because I feel like I just don't have the vocabulary. <laughs> but essentially, the walls will fall down if you start bringing it out too soon. Okay, that's my bowl. Um, essentially, like it kind of, you can see there's a lot of clay at the base. That's support so that it doesn't collapse right here. Um, but I will trim all that off and it'll have a nice little foot ring and it'll look a bit more bowl shaped once I've done that. But I think I have some bowls over there, so let me show you the final product. You just kind of trim away the excess so that you get that rounded bottom. There's another example. Oh, thank you, Colin. Um, yeah, it's like a nice little nature soundtrack.
And um, you can see there's kind of like a little ridge there. Um, but I'll be able to trim that out once, once we get there. Okay, that's all the clay I have, so it's trying to clean up, but which is pretty straightforward. I don't know if you guys want to watch me clean up or not, but <laughs> I think it's kind of therapeutic to watch, like see it all be so dirty and then watch it all get so clean. Okay. Just gonna fill this up with water real quick. That's just kind of like my drying rack where I throw all the stuff I have clean. I try to keep some kind of system here, but I mean, you guys can't see it, but I have a pretty dirty studio. I really need to take care of it. Because it's actually dangerous, <laughs> um, the clay dust, like if you don't clean and clay dust accumulates, which it has in here, um, because there's silica in clay dust um, and like prolonged exposure to silica can give you silicosis um, which is like a deadly lung disease uh, so that's not good <laughs> it's definitely um, best practice to like clean everything after after you finish um, it's not the funnest part of the process, but it's part of the process.
These are all, these are trimmings from the last time I trimmed a pot. And I'm just putting them all in my slot bucket so that I can reclaim them later. I feel like it'd be satisfying to wash clay off all the things. Yeah, it actually really it is. Because also, like, if you try to wash clay off of yourself without a sponge, it's really hard. But as soon as you use a sponge, it, like, comes off so easy. And so, I don't know. Sponging everything down is nice and relaxing. Especially, like, when you go from really dirty to, like, super clean. Like, my wheel, like, this splash bin is uh, brown on the inside like and it's nice like it's like when you clean it the white like glows <laughs> because it's such a contrast to how it was And these, um, this little tray detaches so that you can, um, I don't know, wash it a bit easier. Um, at the craft center, they really encourage you to be clean because it's mandatory that you clean, like, you clean the station you were working at before you leave. But when you have your own studio, it's harder to keep up with that, and so... I've found that I have not retained those good habits, and usually it stays kind of dirty, but it's okay. Okay, so we're at 5.25. I'm gonna go to like 5.30. I think I'm gonna show y'all my studio. This will be interesting since it's a front camera. Okay. So, it's a garage. Um, Oh, I didn't see the question from Moyle Doyle. What are you making? Um, it was a bowl, but at first it was two mugs. Um, but anyway, you walk in. That's the table I wedge at on that piece of canvas. It's kind of messy. Um, but one day I will clean it. It's kind of like a little offshoot of the table. Just hold random things over there. Um, that's the wheel. If you keep on walking... It's my table with everything, all the dried pots, um, and drying pots. This is another shelf with more tools and stuff. I keep my bats there and extra sponges and wo um, wooden boards for drying stuff. Um, and I used to keep a lot more stuff over here. I've tried to consolidate those so that I can make le like mess on less of an area. Um, but I used to keep a lot of stuff there. Now it's just garden stuff. And then... I have a lot of excess tools over there, um, and essentially the reason why I have so many tools is my grandma was a potter, and when she passed, I inherited her whole studio. So I have a lot of pots. I mean, I have a lot of tools and glazes and stuff that I don't that I don't use because it's just I could not possibly use everything I have. <laughs> um, but yeah. Just to recap what I made today, we got, here, I'll set this down. We got the bowl. And then we got the two mugs. which will eventually look like this. And then 
they'll probably look like this or this since this is how I've been enjoying to paint them lately. But yeah. Uh, that's all. Thank you everyone for tuning in. Um, I would throw for longer, but I just don't have any clay that, that's prepped. So I know for next time to prep more. Bye guys.